What's up folks and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be playing Detroit Become Human yet again. Deposit the package. Man, this place is crazy fancy. And there's a zebra on the floor. Okay. Take care of Carl. Wake Carl upstairs. Draw the curtains. This guy's got to be a hunter. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. It's 10 a.m. The weather is partly cloudy, 54 degrees, 80% humidity with a strong possibility of afternoon showers. It sounds like a good day to spend in bed. I did go to pick up the paint that you ordered. Oh, yes, I've forgotten. That is the difference between you and me, right, Marcus? You never forget anything. Show me your arm, please, Carl. No. Carl. Thank you. Hmm. I just opened my eyes and I'm already gritting my teeth. Humans are such a fragile machine. They break down so quickly. All this effort to keep them going. Hey. What happened to your clothes? Oh, it's nothing. Just some demonstrators in the street, Carl. What a bunch of idiots. They think they can stop progress by roughing up a few androids? I hope they didn't harm you. Oh, no, no. They just pushed me around, Carl. I'm fine. Okay. I'll take you to the bathroom now. Anything special on the agenda today? Yes, there's the opening of your retrospective at the Museum of Modern Art. Mm. The gallery director left four messages asking to confirm your attendance. Hmm. I haven't decided yet. We'll see about that later. Okay. What else? Just your usual fan mail. I've already answered. Hmm. Any news from Leo? No, Carl. I can call him if you like. No. No, I don't bother. Hmm, so I wonder who Leo is. I'm starving. Well, your breakfast is ready. Bacon and eggs, just the way you like them. Thank you, Marcus. You're welcome. So this guy must be an artist, based on what we know so far, and he must have an interest as well in hunting or biology. One of those two things. And now we gotta get his breakfast. It's pretty interesting so far because I think all the characters we've been introduced to are somehow going to rebel against humanity in some way. And with Marcus, since his owner is an artist, I think that he's going to become emotionally intelligent and eventually he's going to be able to express himself in a way androids normally couldn't. I 
think Kara's story is probably the easiest to follow so far, and I think we all know what's going to happen with that because of her relationship with Alice and Todd. Thank you, Marcus. Television. The real question mark is going to be Connor because I think in his level I saw something that was a stability gauge. So if he keeps seeing all these traumatic events, is he somehow going to break down as well and become one of these deviant androids? Or is he going to remain true to his program and just be some cold-hearted dude? Why don't you find something to do while I finish my breakfast? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carl. Alrighty, we have to find something to do. Looks like we can either play the piano or read some books. Let's read some Play-Doh. I'm not sure how many things we can do before the old man is done eating his breakfast, but if we finish reading this book, then we'll go ahead and play the piano. What are you reading? Plato's Republic. It's one of the books you recommended. So, what do you think? I quite like philosophy, I think. It asks the questions that I can't answer. You know, what is right or what is wrong, for example. It's not something that is so easy to decide. Asking questions that have no answers is part of being human, Marcus. One day I won't be here to take care of you anymore. You'll have to protect yourself. Make your choices. Decide who you are and want to become. This world doesn't like those who are different, Marcus. Don't let anyone tell you who you should be. Let's go to the studio. Wow, this game is getting really deep, and what Carl is saying is that he's going to die very soon relative to how long androids live, and if Marcus wants to continue on living, he's going to have to develop an ability to think for himself, and with that ability, he's going to be villainized by society. Let's see where we left off. Remove the sheet. It's going to be interesting to learn what happens to androids after their owner dies. Are they reclaimed by the company, resold, deactivated? I have no freaking clue. But if Marcus develops his own will to live after Carl dies, then that is going to result in some major conflict. Okay, so now we have to clean up the studio. This appears to be the last thing we have to do, and the studio will be all clean. We have to wait for new instructions, so in the meantime, let's just watch the master do his thing. your verdict, Marcus? I'm digging it. Yes, there is something about it. Hmm. Something I can't quite define. I guess I like it. The truth is, I have nothing left to say anymore. Each day that goes by brings me closer to the end. I'm just an old man clinging to his brushes. Carl. But enough about me. Let's see if you have any talent. Give it a try. Try painting something.
paint, but would I... Painting what? Anything you want. Give it a try. <sighs> That's interesting. So the master painter has accomplished everything he's ever wanted to do in his field and now is trying to extend his own creative process over to a computer that can only think logically and is totally devoid of emotion. So I think that what we're going to do here and what we're going to see is a total mirror image of that statue. That is a perfect copy of reality. The painting is not about replicating the world it's about interpreting improving on it showing something you see carl i don't th think i can do that it's not in my program i go on go try it grab that canvas do something for me close your eyes Close your eyes. Trust me. Try to imagine something that doesn't exist, something you've never seen. Now concentrate on how it makes you feel and let your hand drift across the canvas. I'm actually a little bit upset with the choices that I made there and I think that I should have went with identity and doubt because I think that's probably going to best represent what Marcus is going to have to struggle with down the road but I'm interested to see what we're going to get anyways we'll just have to wait. Hey, Dad. Leo. I didn't hear you come in. No, I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop by. It's been a while, right? You all right? You don't look so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I need some cash, Dad. Again? What happened to the money I just gave you? Uh, well... It just goes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're on it again, aren't you? No. No, no, I swear, it's not that. No, don't lie to me, Leo. What difference does it make? I just need some cash, that's all. Sorry. The answer is no. What? Why? You know why. Yeah, yeah, I think I do know why. <laughs> you'd, rather, you'd rather take care of your uh, plastic toy here than your own son, right? Tell me, Dad, what's, what's he got that I don't? Smarter, more obedient, not like me, right? But you know what? This thing is not your son. It's a fucking machine! Leo, that's enough. Enough. You don't care about anything except yourself and your goddamn paintings. You've never loved anyone. You never loved me, Dad. You never loved me. <laughs> 